our whole kitchen now smells like Lord Grantham's study <laughs> or the reception room of the Grantham's Downton Abbey. I don't even the know. Drawing the, I never the drawing that. room. I never understood The drawing room. Hey guys, we are back with another video and today's video is a little bit different because today we are going to be making soy candles. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was a comment from one of our um, Q and A's from a while back and a couple people were asking about candles. So here it goes. Yeah, and since the main manufacturer of soy candles in our company is Kale, I thought this is going to be a husband edition. He's gonna be making the candles today and I'm going to be filming him and we'll show you the whole process from beginning to end. We're gonna show you what materials we're using, what scent we're gonna be using, and why we do the things the way we do them. So if you're interested in something like that, then keep watching. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Jerrica. I'm Kale, and if you wanna see more of me, keep watching. If not, just click over to the next video. Full disclosure, this is all me. <laughs> and we are owners, co-owners of Quench Inc, which is a soap and bath mom company, and that company also sells soy candles. Without further ado, let's make some candles. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is start melting down our wax, and we use soy wax for our uh, candle base. I already put a few batches in here, so I'm going to continue on uh, putting in, we're gonna put a total of 908 grams into the candle melting vessel and um, the wax is gonna melt down from there. So I have the last of my wax in here and before I pour it into the beaker in which the wax melts, I uh, just wanna show you guys that we have um, the vessel in a water bath here. Just had this in a pot on a stove. Uh, we put the temperature a little bit above medium and that's how we have the wax melt down. So we talked about the type of wax that we're using for this candle, so let's talk about the fragrance oil that we're using. We are going to be using Mo Rouge's Oak and Whiskey fragrance oil, and this fragrance oil was gifted to us by Mo Rouge Canada, and I was so excited to smell it because this is apparently her best-selling candle scent, and I've never smelled an Oak and Whiskey scent before, but yeah. as soon as I smelled that... I don't think you had me smell this before. Yeah. As soon as I smelled it, I was like, whoa, this is the reason why this type of fragrance oil is so popular in candles because not only does it have that really traditional deep woodsy scent, but there's that whiskey in there that is so timeless and classic. Yeah, that's it's gonna be really, really, really nice. Candle. So when I smelled this at first, it was initially very masculine smelling and I think it's probably because of the wood and also the oak and whiskey part of it, but it's such a traditional universal candle scent. I think anybody would like it. It definitely appealed to me and because it's so deep, it has that relaxing aspect to it, which is what you want in a candle. You definitely don't want your candles to be too in your face. You want it to be subtle, you want it to be mellow, and you want it to be relaxing. And I think that is um, entirely embodied in this fragrance oil, oak and whiskey. So we're super excited to try it out. Yes. Yeah. I think the wood part of it definitely balances out everything. And yeah. if you're curious about the different notes about this fragrance oil, the top note is sherry, the middle note is whiskey, and the base note is wood. And hmm. just a reminder, we're not sponsored by Mo Rouge in any way, but we're just super huge fans of their fragrance oils. And this particular one just captured my attention and imagination right away. And as soon as I smelled it, I was like, this is definitely going in a candle. We have to. That's our project today. And the awesome thing about Mo Rouge labels on their fragrance oils is that they provide the usage rates on their labels. So for here, they have candles listed at four to 10%. Um, if you test candles out and you smell 
um, the hot throw when the candle is being burnt and you think it's not going to be strong enough, then maybe bump up the fragrance a little bit more. But always pay attention to the safe usage rates that the fragrance oil suppliers should be providing when they sell their fragrance oils. That's an indicator of a good, reliable supplier right there. So right now the wax is melting down and once that is melted down, we'll talk a little bit more about the next step of what we do next. We'll see you again when that uh, wax is melted. <laughs> so how long does it usually take for that wax to melt down? It's about around an hour. Around an hour? You can't rush wax melting. <laughs> but there's That's a lot true. of other things we can be doing in the middle between it's like we can get our candles that they're gonna they're the jars that the candles are gonna be going in ready. Mm -hmm. um, we can prepare the wicks. Um, you always want to make sure the wicks are um, centered before you're pouring the wax in. Yep, so is that what we're gonna be doing right now? That's what we'll be doing now. Awesome. Alright, let's do it. These are the jars that we're going to be using. Got them out of the box here, taking the lids off. They're all yep. ready to go. And now we're going to prepare the wicks to be put in them. Yep. And what did we get these jars? We got these jars from you, Lot. Yep. These are really great jars. I really like them. They're pretty sturdy. Alright, so I have in front of me here some of the pieces that we use for the wicks. There's a lot of small little pieces in, in here. These little things are the tabs in which the wick goes through. Mm -hmm. And this will be at the bottom of the candle jar. Yep. So that little hole there, the wick's going to string through there and go to the top. And that's going to be the top of the wick here. And for those wondering, yes, it does matter the size of the actual hole. And when you buy these, they will have the sizes listed. And this is super important because of the particular wick that you're deciding to use, because there are gonna be certain wicks that won't be able to feed through a hole like that, or maybe the wick will be too small for a, um, a wick holder like that. We get these from, where did we get these from? Were they from? Village Crafting Candle. Yeah, Village Crafting Candle. These are the 20 millimeter. The 20 millimeter long neck tabs. And then what is this big roll of stuff here, Kale? And then, so once, this is on the bottom of the candle, it's not gonna stay in place without these little tabs here. So these are little sticky tabs. Um, they're sticky on both ends, mm -hmm. and that way it'll keep it in place and it won't be floating around. So we are coming down to the end of our, this roll of wick that we have. So as you can see, this will string through, um, but then we'll cut um, these wicks according to the size of the jars that we're gonna use. Yep. So the wax is all melted and we are now at the stage where we are going to be dipping these wicks to coat them in some soy wax. So we have just dipped our wicks once and we will do it one more time before we glue them to the bottom of the jar. It adds rigidity to the wick itself so that when you're applying it to the jar it stays straight like this. <laughs> All right, so we have our double dipped wicks right here. And I'm gonna put the tab on the upside of the wick and then I'm gonna just peel off that paper part there. I got this here. And then we're just gonna put this right in the center of that jar. And you can just visually kind of see where the center is. Yeah. Right in there. Our wick sticks out just a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty dead right in the center. And we have one of these guys. This is to hold the wick in place once you're pouring the wax. So you put that in there. 
and kind of put the wick through that little crease there so it holds in place. Just kind of give it a little tug. And that keeps it centered. That's ensures, that ensures that it's nice and centered. Yeah, these metal wick centerers I got from Amazon. And you really want to take the time to make sure your wick is in the center because when you're lighting your candle up, you want an even melt pool. And the way you achieve that is having your wick right in the center. If your wick is over close to one side of the candle, you're going to possibly have one side of the candle not melt. So you'll get a tunneling effect, which isn't desirable. And in addition to that, you'll have a burning flame that's really close to one side of the candle so that when you touch it, it's going to feel really hot and uncomfortable to the touch. So when you're making your candles, make sure that you are centering it and you're doing something to make sure that it's right dead in the center. If you don't tab have these circular tab stickers, what we used to use before was hot glue at the bottom of the, the wick tabs. And that was okay. I was always a little bit nervous about hot glue because I wasn't 100% sure that it would stay. I never had a candle that we have used hot glue for move around on us, but I've heard stories. So that's why we moved towards these tab stickers and they have stuck to the middle, have not moved around. And we are really pleased with these tab stickers so far. We got these from Village Craft and Candle, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. And they have a very um, good, good adhesion to the glass. And things that you want to do to ensure you have good adhesion is a clean glass. You want to make sure that it's not oily or wet inside of the glass itself. Make sure it's completely dry and test it a little bit, lift it up, make sure that it's stuck there real good. But this is really how you prep your candles prior to pouring the wax in there. So this is not a sophisticated object that I'm using. This is just a box, but it really helps out in making a quality candle. If you were to pour hot wax into a candle jar that was just on a surface like say this wooden table, then what you'll find is that this cool wooden table and the cool ambient air around the glass actually pulls the wax that's closest to the glass away from the center because it's going to be hardening that wax um, much faster than the center of the wax that's in the middle. So that's why we like to pour the wax while the jar is in this cardboard box because what the box does is help control that just a little bit more. You can see that there's a layer of cardboard in between the glass and the cool table, and there's a little bit more coverage on the outside of the glass through the cardboard, and that also helps with the wax not cooling as quickly on the outside as it would if the jar were sitting on the table here. And what we have found since we have do been doing this is that we avoid that um, tunneling effect that you might find when you're making soy candles. So what Kale is doing here is taking the temperature of the wax. So we like to temp the wax um, because of a few reasons. One, we have discovered that if you are mixing the wax or the fragrance oil in with the wax at a certain temperature, that wax actually adheres to the fragrance oil so much better, which really helps with the hot throw of the candle once it's lit. And another reason why is because it helps bind the wax molecules with the fragrance oil molecules and it just makes for a better candle in the end. So that's why we like to make sure that we heat the wax up to a very specific temperature before we add the fragrance oil and before we pour the wax and the fragrance oil combined together into their jars. And here is the wax completely melted. We are good to add our fragrance oil. For those wondering, we actually got this picture from Village Craft and Candle as well, and it is really, really useful to melt wax in a water bath. We really like it a lot. And yeah. here's Kale adding Just the add one more, one more whiff. smell of the pure fragrance oil before putting it in. <laughs> and there we go. Man, that smells good. Yep. And then once you add the fragrance oil, is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience? Just want to make sure it's mixed in there real well. So we 
mix it in there for at least two minutes. Yeah, we stir for about two minutes and that allows the fragrance oil to fully bind with the soy wax, which helps for a candle that has a stronger hot throw. <laughs> you're really mixing it there, wow. So as you're mixing it, what do you think of the scent? It smells great. It smells very oaky. It smells oaky. There's a sweetness in there. There's mm -hmm. a deepness in there. A freshness it's, in there. It smells very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Kayla and I are watching Downton Abbey. <laughs> I know we're late to the game watching Downton Abbey, <laughs> but for some reason, this reminds me so much of what if you guys watch the show, what Lord Grantham's study would probably Ooh, smell like, I was say or, library, but or yeah, his study. library. It's, it's very regal and um, uh, I wouldn't, I'm not so much masculine, but just very classic. It's a classic scent. Ready for this? Yes. So Kale is going to pour it now into the vessel. So with our recipe, we're able to fill five eight ounce glass jars from Uline. Yep. Eight ounce straight sided glass jars from Uline. And our whole kitchen now smells like Lord Grantham's study <laughs> or the reception room of the Grantham's Downton Abbey. I don't even the know. Drawing the drawing room. I never The drawing room. So I hear the drawing room and I'm like, isn't that a room that you would go like draw pictures in, but like it's a room that you <laughs> hang out and drink port and wine. And so. sherry and whiskey maybe, who yeah. knows, but yeah. So what we'll do now that the wax has been poured, these candles are gonna cool down. And next time we come back, they're gonna be fully cooled down with hopefully a perfectly smooth top. We won't meddle with them, we promise, so we can show you the power of this very sophisticated looking box. And another thing that we'll do is as these are cooling and solidifying is check to make sure that these wicks are still centered because as they cool down, yes, you'll find that they'll shift around and move around. And the goal with these candles is to keep these wicks as centered as possible. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And then the next time you see us, these are all gonna be solid and we'll show you the smooth tops, hopefully. I mean, from our experience, they're usually smooth, but there is sometimes the odd um, tunnel that we get. And we'll also show you how we correct that, if that's the case, but we'll also still tell you how to correct that if that's not the case. Oh, uh, we'll just do like a, uh, a fake correct. Oh, we'll do a fake correct. <laughs> All right, see you in a GIF. Hey guys, it is actually the next day. We let the candles cool down overnight and we are gonna show you what they look like right now. And this is what they look like now, now that they're completely hardened. You can see we have this um, wick holder there. And to remove it, you just kind of move that piece away from that crease in there and lift it up like that. And as you can see, the wick is right there in the center of right the candle. in the center and the top is perfectly smooth. We don't have any of that tunneling that we were trying to prevent by having it cool down in a cardboard box like this, and you can see that none of them have tunneling, which is awesome. So in the event, if we do have some tunneling, you would have that little hole near the wick there. So all you would have to do is just take the heat gun. Uh, we have a heat gun that we use for packaging our bath bombs and our soaps, and you would just take the gun and apply heat towards the center of the candle. After a few seconds, you'll see the wax starting to melt. When you remove the heat, it'll just leave a nice flat top, much like how we have the candle right here. And for those wondering what we're talking about when we say heat gun, we're talking about one of these guys. And you can get these from any type of home goods store. I think we got this at Home Depot, Kale? Yeah, or it was home? the Depot, yep. Home okay. Depot. And even though Kale did cut these to size when he made these wicks, um, he still has to cut them even more because we wanted them long enough to be able to have the wick centerer thread through the top. So we're gonna trim these to size a little bit more and then we're going to attach our labels and yeah, that'll be it. Every time you kiss me, it's like open whiskey. <laughs> it's 
It's my version of that song. That's a great song. I can't tell you who sings it, but it's a country song. <laughs> Sunshine was. So now that Kale has cut the wicks, we are not done. We still need to label these guys because as beautiful as they look, just plain like this, they need labels on here. And the labels are there to tell your customers what the scent is, how much wax is in the candle itself, and also your burn instructions. And that is absolutely important for candle safety. You wanna make sure that your customer knows exactly how to burn it and where to burn it and all of that stuff because you don't wanna be liable for an unfortunate accident when it comes to candle burning. And we have the labels right here that we printed on our 1.8 by 1.8 online label laser labels. And it's just a matter of peeling them off and sticking them on here and we'll show you what that looks like once we do that. And here is the final candle. And you can see how beautiful it looks with the label on it and you unscrew it and you can see the inside of it right there. And the cold throw of this candle smells so good. I feel like you can smell it super easily by standing just a little bit above it. And we are going to test the candle's hot throw in a bit and show you what it looks like when the candle is lit. So that is it. We really hope you liked this video. It's our first attempt at a making a soy candle video. Let us know if you guys liked it in the comments below. And if you did like it, please give it a huge thumbs up. And we want to take this moment to also thank our patrons. You guys are so amazing and so supportive. If you want to check out our Patreon, you can do that in the link down below. We have our candle uh, making steps over there too, um, a downloadable PDF if you want to reference that. That is all in our patron, Patreon page linked down below. And I especially want to thank my Bubble BFFs over here. They are business owners themselves and I've linked a few of their amazing businesses in the description box below. Please check them out. They are absolutely amazing. And thank you so much to Mo Rouge Canada for sending us their amazing fragrance oils. If you want to get your hands on them, you're in luck because I actually have a discount code that you can use at checkout. It's Jerica10. Enter this code to get 10% off of your order. And trust me, these scents are absolutely amazing. They smell so good. I'm not being sponsored. I just really, really like the fragrance oils from this company. So thank you again, Mo Rouge Canada. You guys are awesome. So that's it. If you like this kind of video, please subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep being awesome, keep making beautiful things like soy candles. And we will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.